Roberts. Welcome to another day of Thrive Bible Devotions. We're in James chapter 4. We're going to continue there today. Uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll get started. Uh, Lord, we just pray today that you uh, take your word and speak to our hearts. Open us up. Help us to receive it, Lord, to apply it into our lives and to live for you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we're in James 4. And if you remember yesterday, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, you know, watch yesterday's video because it, it kind of leads into, into today's. Um, and, uh, but, um, essentially, uh, yes, we talked about the war, the battle going on, you know, inside of us. We ended yesterday in verse five, where it says here that, um, um, the scripture says that he being God yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, right? In other words, he's put this spirit in us to dwell and, um, and, and to guide and direct and to lead us as opposed to, you know, and, and it fights that war with the flesh, and it brings us to verse 6. It says, but he gives more grace, right? Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse 7 then, it says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wrenched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. And we're going to stop there and, and, and just talk about this, this passage here. So because God gives us the spirit, because God then gives us uh, grace, right? And, and he gives more grace, just continues to give it and heap it on there, right? And because of that, it, it says, therefore... Right? Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Uh, uh, um, so, not only we're, we're battling this flesh, right? The flesh that there are desires and wages a war with our spirit, right? But now we're sitting here in this situation where God continues to give us grace. And He wants the grace to be able to, to grace. Again, God's riches, right? It's 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 God it's God's blessings into our life, and he says. But he, he says, therefore, because of that, because he gives us to us, because of this fight, because he gives us more and more grace, um, God opposes the proud then, but gives grace and more grace to the humble. So when we're prideful, when we're proud, when we're we're exalting ourselves, we're going to see less and less grace come to us. Like God opposes the proud. He's against the proud. But then he says, but he gives grace to the humble. And he's going to give grace to you when you, when you live you know, in humility in your life. Now that's hard, guys, because you know what? Our flesh is prideful um, in so many ways. Um, there are people that you can just tell are, are prideful people, but then there's, there's other prides, guys, that just build up in us. You know, there's, sometimes there's pride that, that uh, makes us want to do something, you know, be great and and get, get praise from others. Sometimes it's just pride that stops us from being real with other people. With, you know, stops us from sharing what is really going on in our lives with others. Sometimes it's pride that um, stops us from, you know, sharing our needs with other people and, and letting other people meet our needs. Um, whatever it is, it's, there's so much of that. When God says, but when you live humbly, God's going to heap on grace and give it more and more into your life. And then he goes on to teach. That, so, then, so then how do you live this grace-filled life, right? How do you do that? In verse 7, he just, he makes it clear. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Because of this, this principle that God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble, right? Because of that, submit yourselves to God. Just submit yourself to him. This is resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing um, principle we have here, guys. Um, it starts off with submitting to God. Therefore, submit, therefore, to God. Because of all this, because of God wanting to heap grace into our lives and, and, and give it to you, because God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble, because of that, submit yourself to God. And that's the first step. Submitting yourself to God. Just God, whatever it is you will, I, I, I want to do it. Father, you know what? If you, you know, and, and guys, 
I'm telling you right now, it, it can look so many different ways. I, I really believe that in our lives, my wife and I, we've, we've made decisions based on what we thought God would have us to do that are opposer or contrary to what the world thinks we ought to do sometimes. You know, whether that's um, where we move to, where we live, or how we spend our money sometimes. Um, you know, a job we may take versus, you know, doesn't pay as much, but it allows us to have you know, ministry opportunity. Um, you know, things like that. It's uh, it, it's hard. I have my parents move in with us and live with us um, rent-free, you know, and, and all that. It's, you know, we're, we're, we're doing that... Um, because we believe God would have us to do those things, right? But it limits us. You know, um, my wife teaching at a private school or at a Christian school at times. And, you know, it limits us financially. It limits us, you know, um, in, in those ways that, that the world would say are so important. But we say, no. Now, we'd rather do what God has. We're going to submit to him. So submit to God. That's the first thing, right? Submit to him. Just be willing to give up your, your, your own desires, your own things to God. Now, listen. So submit therefore to God. Then it says resist the devil. Doesn't say win a battle with the devil. Doesn't I mean it just says resist. Just put some resistance. <laughs> doesn't say doesn't say put up great resistance or huge resistance. It just says resist the devil. And what happens? He will promise. Will is a, is a definite. He will flee from you. God, he only comes closer because you open up and you're not you're not willing to tell him no. Right? You're not willing to tell him no. But <clears throat> all you got to do is put up a little resistance. Resist him and he will flee from you. And then it says, and draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Right? You draw near to God and he's going to draw near to you. Uh, and you take a step towards him, he takes a step towards you. It's, it's that simple. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He flees from you. Draw nigh to God. He draw nigh, draws nigh to you. You say, man, I just feel so, I, I just feel distant from God. I feel like, you know, he's just so far out there. Stop. First of all, are you submitting to him? Well, no, I'm not submitting to him. I still don't care about, I'm worried about these things and I want to do these things. I'm not willing to give up, you know, these sins in my life. And you're wondering why he feels so far away. Right? Submit, therefore, to God. Well, I've submitted to God, right? And I'm not doing those things, but he still feels so far away. Have you resisted the devil? Well, no, the devil, you know, I, I, I'm not going to tell him no. You know, ah, here's a problem, right? You're not resisting the devil. Resist him. Okay, so, hey, I've submitted and I've resisted the devil, but God still feels so far away. Are you taking steps toward him? Are you praying? Are you getting into his word? Are you hearing his word in church? Are you drawing close to God? Are you drawing near to him? Because when you do, he draws near to you. It is that simple. It was a promise in the Bible. And if you don't feel close to God, guys, that's the solution. It's not hard. It's not like rocket science, right? He makes it clear. Submit to God, resist the devil, draw near to God. It's that simple. There's no reason for us to feel, to feel distant from God. There's no reason for it. I hope you guys can learn that and understand that. He goes on here. And then he just says, Be wretched and mourn. And weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Your joy to gloom. And he's basically, and he's talking about the, our worldly joys and pleasures and you know all that. It's, hey, you know what? Be wretched. You know, be, um, be humble, right? Be wretched uh, and mourn and weep. Over, you know, with your, over your sin and that. Tell your laughter, you know, your, your silliness and all that stuff. Be turned to mourning and, and, you know, all that joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. It's, it's taking all the worldly pleasures and all the, the fleshly desires and all that and, and weep over its control in your life and mourn over it. And, and, and you know, your, your, your joy in the world, get rid of it and, and, and be humble and, and turn towards God with all that. And when you do that, right? And when you do that, it says here, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. 
all those things you care about in the world, guys, you know, get rid of those and give it up. And God will exalt you over here. And God will lift you up. He'll make, you know, you'll be an heir with Jesus Christ. And you'll have, you know, uh, rewards and treasures in heaven. It's an amazing uh, uh, change, amazing split between the world and, and, and the spirit. And we need to learn to get rid of the worldly pleasures and the worldly uh, desires and the worldly pride and, and focus on Jesus Christ. Right? Draw an eye to God and he will draw an eye to you. Guys, I, I pray you guys get this. Uh, understand it. Bring it in. If you hear someone who doesn't feel close to God, share this message with them. James chapter 4, verse 7. A fantastic, fantastic verse. This is one you want to memorize. You want to, you, want to, you want to meditate on this verse. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, verse 8, and he will draw near to you. Memorize that, dwell on it, think on it. That's the key, guys. That is the key to being close to God. Oh, man. I hope this is good for you. I hope you guys get this and apply it and, and live it. Man, thanks for watching the channel today, guys. Please submit. I mean, submit. <laughs> submit to God. Please subscribe. Uh, like the channel. Please, if you would, share with others. I love you guys. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll catch you again tomorrow. God bless you.